Hi guys, um, this is week number 10, lesson number 2. I know this is usually, or well it was last week anyway, our live lesson. But uh, number 1 I thought we'd have the live lesson as the last lesson uh, before the Easter holidays and before we go back to class. And number 2, Virgin Media have put a, a letter through the door saying that the Wi-Fi is going to be off this afternoon. So I said, um, I better just do the, do the video because it might just cut out her. I might not be able to get on. So anyway, that's all we have to do today. We want to correct these patterns questions. I hope you found that they were nice. I had a look through your through the homework sections there and a lot of you have done them already, which is fabulous. Um, and I think the vast majority have them all right, which is even better, very encouraging. I um, hope you're seeing that this is actually not that bad when you look at what they're asking in the junior cert. And these were asked in the junior cert. Um, so well worth, well worth a look. And I hope you found them okay. Um, and make sure as you go along, you're correcting these. Because if you have the solutions to now to these, when it comes to revising your patterns for your summer exam, well, you'll have it all here in front of you. And it'll be no bother to you. There'll be questions in the summer exam and patterns will be very like these ones. And the homework I'm going to give you this evening um, is based on algebra. And the questions that you're going to do in that are going to be very like the questions you're going to do for the summer as well. Okay, so let's go through a couple of these and see how we got on, right? So uh, we've pattern one has these three, what are they, sticks or straws or something? And um, pattern two has three triangles and I think one, two, three, seven sticks. And pattern three has one, two, five triangles and many sticks you can you count there? Two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, I think, eleven sticks. So it goes from three to seven to eleven. So I'm just going to, I haven't even looked at that yet, but I'm just going to write that in. So this is, um, um, one triangle, three mm -hmm. sticks. This is three triangles and what do we say? One, two, three, then seven sticks. And the right one then is, how many did we say? Three, five, seven, nine, eleven sticks. And it gives us five triangles. So I'm just putting that down there for myself, just to kind of see. So it's going from one to three to five in triangles and from three to seven to eleven in sticks. They want us to draw the fourth pattern. Okay. Well, so it goes from one triangle to three triangles to five triangles. So I'm fairly sure the next pattern is going to be, it goes from one to three to five. So if I'm going from here to here, I'm adding two triangles. And going from here to here, I'm adding two triangles. Sticks, I'm going from three to seven sticks. So I'm adding four sticks. And from here to here, I'm going from seven to 11, I'm adding four sticks. So every time I seem to be adding four sticks, and those four sticks give me two extra triangles. So I'm going to do the same again to find the fourth pattern. So for pattern four, I'm going to add on another four sticks. And that's going to give me an extra two triangles. So I should end up with, I had five. So this, uh, my, 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 the pattern I'm going to draw is going to be five triangles and two triangles. So it's going to be seven triangles. So this is pattern four, pattern four, seven triangles. And it should be, I'm adding 11 sticks, add four, and it should give me 15 sticks in my new pattern. So seven triangles and 15 sticks. Okay, so I'm gonna draw them in the box if I can. So um, it's going to be one, two, you know, you know, you know me and drawn. There's two triangles. There's three triangles. Sorry, there. There's four triangles. How many am I doing? Seven. There is five triangles, there's six triangles. Now I know that's dreadful, but I'm trying to do it with the Apple Pen. Um, so basically what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm having there, I have now have seven triangles and 15 sticks. So 15 sticks makes up seven triangles like that. Okay, I know that's dreadful, but there's triangle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven triangles. Okay, um, onwards then, fill in the table below to show the number of triangles in each of the first five patterns. Okay, well pattern one up here had three sticks. Sorry, number of triangles, not number of sticks. So pattern one had one triangle. Pattern two had three triangles. They give that as that. Pattern three had five triangles. Pattern four, the one we, draw, when we drew, had seven triangles. And because it's going from one to three, I added two. Three to five, I added two. Five to seven, I added two. I'm gonna add two again to give me 
nine triangles. So I have to add in two every time to go up like that. I don't even need this here. I don't even, I don't need the space um, in, in the box. The last part, or second last part, what kind of sequence in, 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 in each pattern and give a reason? Well, what type of sequence is that? It's a linear sequence, isn't it? Why? It's a linear sequence because the first difference is always plus two. So the first difference is the same. The first difference is always plus two. Okay, that is part C done. First difference is always the same, plus two. Um, part D, one pattern has exactly 21 triangles. Tick the correct box to show um, which pattern this is. So which pattern, what number pattern is going to have 21 triangles? If we go back, we can have a look at our table. And we could say, right, can we, can we even carry this on? Well, if we were to say, well, pattern, if we're adding two every time, pattern six is going to have 11 triangles. Pattern seven is going to have 13 triangles. Pattern eight is going to have 15. Pattern nine is going to have 17. Pattern 10 is going to have 19. Now, could they ask us for pattern number 21 triangles, right? So pattern 11 is going to have 21 triangles. Okay, and we, that, we, we, can, we can do it like that. We can put we, we could put it at the formula if you want, but you don't need to. So it's going to be pattern number um, 11. And we've done the workings um, up above. Okay, <clears throat> part, last part, difficult enough. There's also a parallelogram in these patterns. The number of parallelograms in pattern n is n squared minus n. So they're giving us an expression. But they're saying, use, use this to work out the number of parallelograms in pattern 30. So we want to know how many parallelograms. A parallelogram, so that's a parallelogram. That's a parallelogram. What it means is that this side here is parallel to this side here. And this side here is parallel to this side here. This, this, the second one is an awful example of a parallelogram. It should be like that. That means that this side here is parallel to this side here. And this side here is parallel to this side here. It doesn't matter in this case. We're, they're saying let n equals 30. So if we have n squared minus n is our formula. Everywhere we see an n, we're going to stick in a 30. So we're going to have 30 squared minus 30. So we work that out. What is 30 squared? I'm just going to do that on the calculator for you. Sorry, I left my calculator downstairs. So I'm just to do that on my phone. So 30 by 30 is 900. So we're going to end up with 900. That works. 30 squared is 900 minus 30. So it's, the answer is going to be 870. So the number of parallelograms in pattern N. So pattern 30 is going to have 870. Okay. So n is equal to 30. So we're subbing in for 30 for n. Okay, right. Let's go on and look up um, our tr tr try question number two. Very similar. So there, there's pattern one. You see pattern one, two squares. Pattern two, you get three squares over here. You get an extra three squares over here. So what's after happening between pattern one and pattern two? We're after adding three s's, three squares, three s three squares and from here to here well, we had one two three four five then we have one one two four five six seven eight nine ten so we've gone from we're after adding um, we're after uh, going from five to ten so we're after adding five squares so going from pattern one to pattern two we added three squares going from pattern five to pattern ten we added five squares so you think we're, we're adding three then we're adding five. So our, we're after going adding a block on the end here and a block on the end there. So let's draw the next pattern. So we start with our square up in the corner. That seems to stay the same every pattern. And we're going to add So we're going to add an extra 
six squares on this time well we're going to go we're going to go out one out, out out four this time so see we went out two this time one this time two this time and three this time so in pattern four we're going to go one two three four so we're going out four this time and because we only went down one in pattern one two in pattern two three in pattern three we're going to go down four as well one two three four so I'm gonna fill in the new square like so. There is this is going to be pattern number four. So you see the pattern. See it's increasing by one square across and one square down um, every time. So we have to just to work it out, going from pattern three to pattern four. How many have I added? Well I've one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in pattern three in this one i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen so i've added i've gone from um i've added three here i've added five here and i'm, I'm adding seven squares going down here so it's not linear is it the, the common difference is going to be different so i'm adding seven squares going down here going across one and one more on the bottom as well okay fill in the table to show the number of false squares. So in pattern one, we only had two squares. In pattern two, there was five squares. See them there, you can count them. In pattern three, you had 10 squares. And in pattern four, you wanna have, add seven on, you had 17 small squares. It should be, not three, it should be 10. So you're just counting the number of squares and filling them in the boxes. So we pattern two, we two, pattern uh, pattern one, we two, pattern two, we five, pattern three, we 10, and pattern four, we had 17. We don't need the, the, the box. Okay, for part um, <clears throat> for part C then, um, they say the number of small squares in pattern N, the pattern we don't know, is N squared plus one. Okay, so the nth term is N squared plus one. Use this to work out the number of small squares in pattern 20. Okay, so they're saying, right, um, we have to work out the uh, in pattern number 20. You know, if you don't want to find any pattern, in everywhere we see an N, we're going to stick in a 1. Okay, so we're going to have, let me see, so it's going to be 20 squared, for N squared, 20 squared plus 1. 20 squared plus 1. Okay. And so we work that out 20 by 20, which is 400. So 400 plus one, which is going to be equal to 401. Okay, so everybody see it then, stick in the number they ask you for. Okay, is this a, <clears throat> is this a, what, what, what type of pattern is this? So is it linear? Definitely not linear, isn't it? Definitely not linear, because it's um, the co the common difference is not the same. Quadratic. Is it quadratic? Is it a curve? Or is it exponential? So remember, quadratic, quadratic ones look like this. They have the uh, U N shape or the U shape. Exponential curves look like that, going up like so. So if we look back at our thing. We are our table, we go from 2 to 5 to 10 to 17. Now, I think it's quadratic. One, because if it has an n squared, it's generally quadratic. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my table for a second. And I'm going to have a quick look. Because remember the way to figure out if something's quadratic is to find a second difference. So we found that the difference between 2 and 5 was plus three. The difference between five and 10 was plus five. The difference between 10 and 17 was plus seven. So I know that my first difference was not the same. It's definitely not linear. To find out if it's quadratic, let's look at the second difference. The difference between three and five is plus two. The difference between five and seven is plus two. Ah, that tells us that it is quadratic. If these two hadn't been plus two, we would be ticking the exponential box down here. 
but we're not. The second difference is the same, so it's quadratic. The reason is the second difference And it's plus two. Okay, on then to look at question three. Um, so question number question number three here it is here in a raffle the choice team um, prizes A B or C the winner of the raffle chooses one prize so prize A um, gets um, same some money every day for six days so you get some money every day for six days, um, she gets ten euro on day one. 15 euro on day two, and so on so until day six. Okay, each day after day one, she gets five euro more than she got the day before. Okay, fair enough. Complete the table, how much money she gets. So five euro more than she got the day before. So we can complete that table. So 10 euro on the first day, 15 euro on the second day. So we just carry that on 20 euro, add five, 25 euro, add five. 30 euro, I'm adding 5, and add 5 again to give me 35 euros. So each time I'm adding plus 5 euro, plus 5 euro, plus 5 euro, I can might be able to start thinking in the back of my mind, is this linear? It is linear, isn't it? Because the first difference is the same. So before they even ask us those kind of questions, um, I haven't even looked, but I'm thinking, right, the first difference is the same. This is going to be linear. If I had to graph it, it'd be a nice straight line because it's going up in fives all the time not quadratic. We don't need to bother looking at the second difference. Definitely not exponential. Let's see what they're asking us. What kind of sequence is made by the daily amounts? Okay, straight away. Even there's the question there. They're looking for linear. Why? Same reason. First difference is the same. And it's plus five every time. Okay. Um, Part three then, find the total amount of money the winner will get if they choose um, five or six days, isn't it? So it's all we have to do there is we have to add up all the different amounts. So it's going to be, um, I'll, I'll just do it in the box for you. You, you, you. You'll know this, so 10 euro and 15 euro and 20 euro and 25 euro and 30 euro and 35 euros. So add up all the different days amount of money that this person's gonna get and it gives you 35, I think, 135 euro. You might correct me on that. That's quick sum in my head, 135. Okay, Um. on then to part B. The prize B winner gets two euro on day, on day one, four on day two, and so on until day six. Each day after day one, she gets twice as much as she got the day before. Okay, right. So if this person's this person's doubling her money every day, so if we have well, it was two euro the first day and we're doubling it. Second day, this person's getting four quid. Double it, eight euro, and we know we're right because they're giving us sixteen euros in day four. Double it again, thirty-two euro on day five. Double thirty-two to give you sixty-four euro on day six. Now, this gets a bit more tricky though. What type of sequence is, is this one? Okay, definitely not linear, is it? Because it's doubling, so they're not the, the first difference is not the same. So we're kind of thinking, is it is it quadratic or is it exponential? So it's definitely not going to be linear. So let's check the first difference and second difference and have a look. Right, we're going four to eight, you're adding four. Going from eight to 16, you're adding eight. Going from 16 to 32, you're adding 16. And go from 32 to 64, you're adding 32. So definitely not linear, I can process it off. But I'm wondering, is it quadratic? If it's quadratic, the second difference is going to be the same. If the second difference is not the same, our only option then is exponential. So let's have a look at the difference. The difference between 4 and 8 is plus 4. The difference between 8 and 16 is plus 8. The difference between 16 and 32 is 16. There's our second differences there. So here's our first diff, and here is our second diff. They're not the same. Therefore, it's not quadratic, it's exponential, which means the graph, if I was to draw it, would look something like that. Okay, um, reason, second difference. Is not the same.
Okay. And the last winner, um, pr um, pr prize C. Prize C gets a single prize of a hundred euro on day one. Alexa wins the raffle. Which prize do you think Alexa should choose? A, B, or C? Well, we already know. We worked out somewhere up here at that um that um prize A. So the winner of A gets a hundred and thirty-five euro. B, they're telling us in this question that C just gets 100 euro. So we're wondering what was B? Well, how much would B get all together? So we're gonna add up all these. So if I add up four and eight, this is, this is prize B. Eight and four gives me 12. Add 16, give me 28. 58 gives me 60. 124 if I add up prize B. So B is gonna get 124 euros. So would you take the 100 euros straight out? Would you take prize A? Or would you take prize B? So straight away, looking at those, looking at those numbers, um, prize A is going to be the preferred one. Prize A, why? More money. It's the most money, isn't it? You could argue, I'd rather take C, get me hundred euro day one, and go and spend it. I don't want to wait six days to get the hundred and thirty-five, but um, you know. I would go with the obvious. Generally, the more 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 money, um, is 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 the correct answer. Okay, question four. Then four. Question four out of uh, of of five. You have these a uh, couple of patterns. You can see they're kind of starting to get very similar, which is great. We like when it's similar because then we can predict what's going to come up in the exam. So stay um shade in the discs in the fourth pattern. Okay, so we have um where we've one shaded here, we've uh two shaded here i'm noticing the pattern seems to be adding three every time so um in this in, in second pattern i have three more here's my new three ones in the fourth pattern i have three more again and it seems to be shading one more every time so you can see the you can see in the fourth pattern there they've added on my three new ones at the end and i should be shading not one from pattern one pattern two pattern three I should be shading in four of those circles. So I shaded one in the first one, two in the second one, three in the third one. So I'm shading in four. Complete the discs. How many? Pa see how the pattern continues. So I'm thinking just just for this before I go down, have a look at that. Um, I have one, two. I have so my, I have six discs, one shaded. This one is nine discs, two shaded. This one is twelve discs, three shaded. This one is three, six, nine, twelve. This is fifteen discs and four shaded. I'm just putting that in for myself. See, I can't remember what they ask here. Number of white discs. The white discs are a non-shaded one, are they? Yeah. So number of white discs. So there's five in the first one. So five unshaded ones in the first pattern. And you can see they put the five there for us. In the second one, I have three, four, five, I have seven seven in the second pattern the third pattern i have one two three four five six seven eight nine and the fourth pattern i have one two three four five six seven eight nine i have eleven okay so i'm looking at my patterns now i'm looking at my table there so going from here to here and here to here and here to here i seem to be going up by two by two by two so i'm going to carry that on Add two there and add two there to give me up to eleven and two gives you thirteen. Thirteen and two gives me fifteen. There's my table done. In a particular stage in the pattern, there are twenty-one white discs. Okay, so twenty-one white discs. How many shaded discs are there in this stage of the pattern? Okay, so if there's twenty-one white discs. How many shaded discs would there be? Okay, well we're thinking right. Um, here, here's our here's our number of here's our number of shaded discs on the left hand side there, um, um, one shaded disc two three four five six, but they're saying um there's going to be twenty one white discs. Okay, well if we, if we carry on that table, I I I, I, I do pattern number. So number of shaded discs would be seven. So this is going to be shaded ones, and this is going to be white discs. So if I go seven, I'm going to add two again. It's going to give me seventeen. If I add another pattern with eight shaded discs, it's going to give me nineteen. 
And if I add another pattern with nine shaded discs, it's going to give me 21, which is what I'm looking for. So how many shaded discs are there in this stage of the pattern? There's going to be nine. So in a pattern with 21 white discs, there's going to be um, nine shaded discs. Okay, part four, write down the relation between the number of shaded discs and the number of white discs. If you click, uh, use the, uh, stay clear of the meaning of any letters. So if you can put it as a formula, um, or once I, I, I wouldn't bother, I would write it out as it sounds. So there are two extra white discs for every shaded disc. That fair two extra white discs it's a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit slow loading there um for every shaded disc so i say so every time i go on every time i move from here to here this went from five white discs to seven white discs to nine white discs to 11 white discs this went from one shaded to two shaded to three shaded to four shaded so what's that pattern what's, what's, what's happening here so there's two extra white discs for every shaded disc. So every time you add a shaded disc, you add two extra white discs. And you can do that till the cows come home. Our last question. You can ask me any questions on these if you're, if you're, if you're stuck, okay? Fill in the first difference and the second difference for the following patterns. Okay, so they want us to do the first difference and the second difference. Okay, so they're saying here that the difference between four and nine is five. So what's the difference between two and four is gonna be two. The difference between nine and 17 is going to be eight. The difference between 17 and 28 is going to be, no, I don't, I don't, I don't bother about the plus, is going to be 11. Now they want us to do the second difference. So they want us to find this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And, we're, and we know now that that's correct, and that's correct because the difference between eight and 11 is three. So we're on a winner. The difference between two and five is gonna be three. And the difference between five and eight is gonna be three. Notice the second difference are all the same. Okay. Um, pattern two, a bit of, bit of negative stuff. So they want you to, the difference between minus one and two. So number line job, minus one. I wanna get the two, I have to add three. Two to five, add three, five to eight, add three, A to 11, add three. So the second difference, difference between three and three is nothing. Difference between three and three is nothing. Difference between three and three is nothing, okay? State whether each pattern is linear or quadratic, okay? Well, our first pattern, our first differences were not the same, not linear. Our second differences were the same, so our first pattern, because our second difference is the same, it is going to be quadratic. Second difference is the same. The second pattern, so there's that, the first pattern there. The second pattern, our first differences were all the same. And you know if our first differences are the same, it is linear because the first difference same great to see in the homework loads of you getting these out and uh, not a bother to you okay and shin a and that is patterns if you have any questions on those but make sure you correct them have the right answers in your in your homework folder so when it comes to patterns are going to be a major part of the of, of the of the summer exam and for you to have all those exam questions done out and corrected and for you to figure out where your mistakes are it will be so good for when you're prepping, prepping for the summer exam the other thing that's going to be really valuable um is your homework for today your homework for today if you go into the content library here the content um so have a look at the content library here and the content library has the, the patterns exam questions which you've just done and in the algebra folder so you see it here just underneath hit the algebra folder and there's all our notes on algebra that we did before 
right? All our notes in algebra are all still there. All the questions worked out for you. But I've added this extra page in here. Algebra expressions, junior cert exam questions. And when you go in there, there is a, a load of questions, um, about half an hour's worth of work. And we're going to correct those during lesson three. So it goes through um, just assigning X's and Y's and things like that. The subbing in for um, numbers for letters to a bit of multiplication, to a bit of fraction work. Um, there's loads of these double brackets. Remember, multiply the first one by the first one and the first one by the second one. Use the, the algebra introduction folder to go back over to figure these out. Like I said, you battle through these, you'll, um, um, you, you'll, under you'll understand them much better. Okay. So that's your homework for, um, for for lesson number three. Lesson number three will be live um, and we'll be going through these and I can answer any questions that you have on algebra or any questions that you have on um, patterns from today. Okay, mind yourselves and I'll talk to you later on.